بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم آئی ایم ڈاکٹر محمد عدنان ورکنگ ایز اسسٹنٹ پروفیسر ان دا ڈپارٹمنٹ آف فزکس کوہارٹ یونیورسٹی آف سائنس اینڈ ٹیکنالوجی آئی ویلکم یو ٹو دی کورس پی ایچ وائی فور اے ٹو لیزر پلازما انٹریکشنز اٹ از دی ایٹ لیکچر آف دس کورس اینڈ ویل بی ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دی ڈبلیو کے وی سولوشن فار ویو پروپیگیشن ان ان ہوموجینس پلازما We know that the WKB uh, approximation is a method finding the approximate solution to linear uh, differential equations having uh, coefficient depends upon say x or we can say spatially varying coefficients. So here we have a situation uh, <coughs> where the laser or the electromagnetic wave will interact with a plasma which is in homogeneous that is the the plasma is having density gradient uh, in a particular direction so we will uh, adopt to this uh, wkb uh, solution for obtaining the the wave equation which is uh, based on the 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 approximate solution comes from the wkb First, I will give the learning objective. Uh, at the end of this lecture, the student will understand how plasma modifies the propagations of the electromagnetic waves. If you remember, uh, in the last lecture, we have uh, discussed the wave equation for the light wave or the electromagnetic wave uh, 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 inside a plasma. And uh, we have considered the homogeneous plasma situation. So once there are density gradient, that is, we have in homogeneous plasma, uh, then the 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 electromagnetic wave propagations, uh, uh, the behavior changes, and we will see uh, the various aspect of the laser, or we can say the electromagnetic wave propagation uh, inside a plasma which is in homogeneous. In this course, we are following uh, the book. The Physics of Laser Plasma Interactions by Williams L. Kruer. Uh, uh, in this uh, lecture, I have taken uh, the illustrations from this book. <clears throat> As I told you in the last lecture, we have to investigate some of the basic features of the propagation of light waves or we can say the electromagnetic waves in an inhomogeneous plasma today. So let us consider a plane wave uh, normally incident on a plasma slave. Remember, we have uh, to consider the, the simplest version of the uh, wave propagation in homogeneous plasma where the, the electromagnetic wave is incident normally to the plasma slave. That is, we, we uh, will not be discussing the oblique incidence. So, Uh, assuming the variation uh, in the density is only in the z direction, uh, that is uh, the plasma density as we are talking about in homogeneous plasma, so that density uh, varies with x, that is there lies a gradient in the z direction and by normal incidence we mean the laser is also incident in the same direction. So, if there is gradient uh, in the density or we can say in homogeneous plasma, so the plasma dielectric function which is nothing but if you remember 1 minus uh, uh, omega p square or 1 minus omega p square over uh, omega square that we have uh, already uh, defined in the previous lecture. The plasma dielectric function is 1 minus omega p square by omega square where omega p square is the plasma frequency uh, electron plasma frequency and in the denominator omega is the frequency of the incident electromagnetic wave or the laser wave so that was the profile if you remember last time we started with e x is equal to e e to the power minus iota omega t and if you remember i told you that this omega which is the frequency of the electromagnetic wave has to be 
greater than the plasma frequency, electron plasma frequency, uh, in order the, to have the propagation through the medium. But today the situation will be somehow different because uh, initially if we take a frequency which is greater than the plasma frequency, uh, but uh, the density is varying with Z. So, uh, as the, the, the electromagnetic wave propagate through the plasma uh, and let the density is increasing so that the plasma dielectric function will also uh, change because it depends upon the plasma frequency and the plasma frequency depends on this the, the, the density. So that's why uh, the the propagation of the electromagnetic wave will will not be the same as we have discussed uh, in the previous case. So that is the profile, and if you see, we'll discuss some of the interesting features. That is, the the amplitude of the wave is now depends upon the z. That is, the the the, the coordinate where the gradient. Uh, is there in the de in density gradient is there. So the amplitude will not be the same through the plasma for the electromagnetic wave and also the phase. So if you remember last time we have uh, developed these two uh, can say wave equation in the general form uh, uh, from the equation of motion and also uh, using the Maxwell's equation and we have uh, solved uh, the simplest case for the homogeneous plasma uh, situation and we have obtained omega square is equal to omega p square plus c square k square the, the, when we have discussed the, the various features of uh, that dispersion relation or wave equation. Now uh, we have to switch to the inhomogeneous plasma situation where we have these density gradients, so uh, these two equations will take the form of uh, these two differential equations, two sets of differential equations, and as I told you, uh, we'll be uh, adopting the WKB solutions. Remember, uh, in the uh, in the coming uh, lecture, we'll also compare uh, the outcomes of the WKB solution. Uh, for the wave propagation in homogeneous plasma to analytical solution for plasma with a constant density gradient that is uh, will adopt to a particular type of uh, density gradient that is uh, the simplest version is the linear that is the density uh, changes linearly with a uh, with a with a coordinate say z so there we will be comparing the outcomes of the WKB solution, which is, as I told you, an approximate solution. So we'll first develop a WKB solution for the fields. That is, we need to solve uh, uh, the, the differential equation. And as I told you in the beginning, that uh, we'll be solving uh, a linear differential equation uh, whose coefficients are, uh, say, uh, spatially varying coefficients. Although, as I told you in the previous lecture as well, that this uh, this method is limited to weak density gradient, this solution provides an excellent illustration of how gradients in the density affect the wave propagation. So that is the aim of today's lecture, that to see how the density in the uh, how the gradient in the density profile. Uh, changes the plasma dielectric function, which in turn changes the uh, the plasma frequency, and uh, it changes the profile of the field uh, through the amplitude and also the phase. And uh, I told you that in the next lecture we will also uh, compare the exact solution for the field assuming linear variation in the plasma density. So that will be uh, part of the coming lecture. So today we'll see how uh, adopting the WKB solution for uh, these profile uh, in the own homogeneous plasma which is having these configurations. 
So uh, a very useful approximate solution for the wave propagation can be obtained in the limit that the field vary slowly in space. That is the 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 functions, uh, or we can say the 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 fields are uh, space varying function, but uh, rather they are slowly varying in space. Now it is a uh, convenient. Uh, method to solve the electric field that is we have to to obtain the the solution of the differential equation which of course give us the electric field or the profile of the electromagnetic wave now if we take the electric uh, vector to be in the x direction uh, that is uh, let the as i told you the gradient lies in the z direction but since it's an electromagnetic wave so uh, the the activities or we can say the the interaction of the laser with the plasma lies in the exact plane and let the we, we just want to skip these uh, subscripts so that this x uh, is the electric field profile so we can uh, convert this equation to this form by taking ex to be e e now, as I told you, we assume a slow variation in the, the dielectric function of the plasma that is a weak density uh, gradient is there and look for the solution of the form. Now, uh, we have assumed that the electric field is varying slowly in space and also the dielectric function varies with Z, that is the 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 dielectric function is nothing but 1 minus omega p square over omega square where this omega p in the denominator is a function of density so that when the density is varying slowly that means the dielectric function is the uh, is, a, is a slow varying function of, of the of that density gradient so basically this is the differential equation for which we are looking for a solution of this type where we have the amplitude which depends upon z and also uh, the phase part now uh, where these e naught of z which is the amplitude uh, which depends upon z then z is nothing but the, the coordinate over which the density gradient lies and the phase are slow, slowly varying functions. So this is the solution. So we'll uh, take a, a, a method, which is the, of course, the in solving the differential equation. This is the solution, the anticipated solution. So this will satisfy this equation. So that what we have done, uh, and we'll be using the WKB approximation. That is the 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 second order different second order derivative of the amplitude is somehow smaller compared to the the variation of the phase part uh, with respect to z. So this is this uh, this is the differential equation for which we are uh, uh, trying to have a solution of this type. So for that uh, we need to differentiate this. Uh, this electric field profile or we can say the solution twice and we need to put it back here in the differential equation. Now at the end uh, uh, of this lecture on the last slide uh, uh, I will give you the, the steps, the mathematical steps how you differentiate twice this electric field and then using uh, that second order differential, uh, we can say the second derivative of this solution here and also putting the electric field itself for the solution here so that you will be getting uh, an equation of this kind. So uh, where the prime uh, represent the second uh, derivative with respect to z. Now, to the lowest order, uh, one can obtain the phase part. Uh, it is important that once we have a solution, we need to uh, know how the amplitude varies with z. So that will comes out next, and how the phase changes with z. So that is here. 
So this is the, the solution for which we adopted that method, uh, the WKV method and obtaining uh, the phase part and the next uh, order will give us uh, uh, the amplitude part. So we need to put these two into the solution again and we'll be having a solution of this kind. That is, the, the phase part is exclusively here and the amplitude part is constant over uh, the psi which is again obtained from this equation. If you see, uh, you need to have few steps that is, uh, you need to uh, bring these two terms in a product rule that is the, the, uh, the in terms of rate of change so that this give, gives you a constant and this will come in the denominator. So we have this EFS represent the value of the electric field in free space. So since the electromagnetic wave propagates uh, through plasma. So uh, if you see the profile uh, of that electric field or we can say the electromagnetic wave changes from the value of the free space by an amount epsilon uh, 1 over 4 in the denominator. Now uh, we need to see some of the uh, consequences of uh, these results. Uh, which is obtained from the, the propagation of electromagnetic wave in homogeneous plasma. So here one can see that the amplitude, as I told you in the beginning, that the amplitude will change. So this is the magnitude and also the phases also changes. So we'll see on the next slide. So this was the solution. It is apparent from the above equation that the amplitude of the electric field increases as the light wave propagates towards higher density. So as I told you, the density gradient lies uh, in the, along the z-axis. So as the, the electromagnetic wave or the laser is incident perpendicular to the uh, plasma, we can say the uh, normal incidence, so that as the electromagnetic wave or the laser propagates through the plasma, so that it will encounter uh, a greater and greater density. So once the, the, the density is on increasing, that means the plasma frequency is increasing and that means the plasma dielectric function is keep on decreasing. So once it is decreasing, that means the amplitude part is keep on increasing. That is why because to Oh, one can see this this effect through the through the energy flux conservation which is given by vg which is the group velocity of the electromagnetic wave in, inside the plasma and this is that amplitude part so if we use this vg over c uh, by, by definition uh, here so that one can have that amplitude uh, exclusively it increases in order to uh, conserve the overall intensity or energy flux. So uh, you also know that once the plasma uh, is going through that, uh, sorry, once the electromagnetic wave or the laser is propagating through the plasma, which is having these density gradients so that we have uh, a Z dependent plasma dielectric function and also the Z dependent uh, amplitude. Z dependent uh, amplitude go, that is through again the plasma dielectric function so that uh, the laser will come out of the plasma uh, at a point where the, the frequency of the electromagnetic wave is equal to the plasma frequency because at that point, the plasma dielectric function goes to zero and beyond that point, the wave vector is complex so that laser will not propagate uh, further through the medium and it will comes out. So that is that turning point. Uh, we will also discuss uh, those situation or we can say where the solution uh, uh, have, a, have a, a, a breakdown. Or in other words, the point where the 
the the term you know the critical density term where the epsilon goes to zero or we can say the lambda uh, goes to infinity since the energy flux can also be expressed in terms of e cross b so that the value of b uh, is also there but the important thing is that the uh, electric field increases the profile of the electromagnetic wave the electric part increases in order to uh, validate the conservation of the the energy flux but also the magnetic field uh, uh, decreases because this is the value of the 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 value of the magnetic part and uh, since this is keep on decreasing because of the increasing density so that overall the the value of b through the plasma which is the electromagnetic part so that is decreasing and the electric component is increasing now this was the solution uh, that comes out to be a uh, change so if as a conclusion uh, I, i'll tell you one thing that once the plasma is inhomogeneous and the electromagnetic wave propagates through that plasma so that the amplitude and phase are uh, changes so uh, now we we'll look for the uh, the validity condition for the wkb so in obtaining this solution uh, the first order equation give us this thing where we have ignored as i told you the second order derivative with respect to these quantities and by definition uh this k which is omega psi over c uh requires this thing that the the rate of change of the electric field with respect has to be smaller than k e not now this uh solution then one can obtain the the lambda uh curly epsilon over curly z this epsilon is nothing but plasma dielectric function has to be smaller where this lambda is 2 pi over uh, kz in another word one can say that the variation in the plasma density must be sufficiently slow that the fractional change in the dielectric function the fractional change in the dielectric function uh, uh, in a local wavelength is very small and that is the wkb solution breaks where the 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 plasma dielectric function goes to zero and that is that Uh, critical at the critical density or we can say the turning point where the plasma frequency is equal to the the wave frequency or we can say the the frequency of the electromagnetic wave so that uh, the the plasma dielectric function goes to zero and there the lambda goes to infinity now uh, as i told you you need to follow the steps uh, uh, which we have one can do uh by obtaining the solution of the the linear differential equation following the wkb solution so that that this was that expected solution and you need to differentiate it twice with respect to z which is the uh, direction uh, over which the density gradient lies so that one can obtain the equation which we have discussed so with this Uh, I thank you for your time.